Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We've been studying the fruit of the Spirit, and today I want to start talking about faith and faithfulness. Faithfulness. Actually, we have already done a lengthy study called the Law of Faith. And so if you want a thorough study of the subject of faith, then you can go to my website at www.victoriousfaith, that's V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S-F-A-I-T-H dot C-O. And there was the series called The Law of Faith. It was an eight week series. And so let me just mention briefly that in Galatians five verses 22 and 23, and it lists the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And this, uh, this is in the King James translation in the King James translation. It calls this fruit, Faith. And it is the word in the Greek language for faith. But it is also the word for faithfulness. It's the same word because a, you will see if you did any research, a lot of translations of the Bible will translate this word faithfulness. And actually, most translations of the Bible that I looked at. On the computer, on software, listing like 30 translations, this is translated as faithfulness. And so we're going to study faithfulness right now. The word faith means persuasion, conviction, assurance, and belief. Being confidently persuaded. Persuaded and persuasion, conviction, assurance, and belief. That is the word faith. But we're going to study faithfulness. Now, it is very related because faithfulness comes from faith. And so the definition, well, first let me read to you Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1 1 in the King James says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I shared this when we studied faith in the previous series on faith. But the word substance here in this verse is not the way it is not meaning what we think of as substance today in modern English substance would be considered like stuff material, the stuff, the material substance is stuff. It is material, but this is in the King James Bible. King James Bible was written 400 years ago. And it's in the, in the modern time, 400 years ago, the word substance had a different meaning. It is actually, if you look at the word substance and you break it in half, sub stance, sub stance. Now sub like in submarine, it means under, under. And then stance means, of course, standing. So the substance is actually meaning foundation. The Greek word translated substance is Hypostasis, and it means foundation. So a better translation, faith is the foundation, substance, that which stands under or is under what you stand on. What? So it is 
actually foundation. Faith is the foundation of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And in that way, you see foundation as something which is solid and firm and immovable. A foundation is solid, firm, and immovable. From that, we get the understanding of faithful. Faithful and faithfulness. Because a faithful person is one who is solid and firm. It is being stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. So with the idea of foundation, faith is the foundation of things hoped for. With that idea or concept of foundation, that's where the word faithful or faithfulness comes from. That's how faith and faithfulness are related. It comes from the concept of foundation. It comes from that idea of something that is solid and firm and immovable. Something that is stable. So now we're talking a per- about a person just as look like you would stand on a concrete foundation, you can stand on it and and be confident that it's not going to move or shake. In the same way, a person who is faithful is solid, firm, and immovable in a good way. Not talking about stubbornness, in a bad way, but someone who is, let me say it just like this, solid and firm and then stable, a person who is stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. A faithful person is solid and firm, stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. I'm going to say it again. Are you this kind of person? A faithful person is a person who is solid, firm, stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. Faithfulness is... Being stable, solid, firm, stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. Faithfulness is also, let's add on to that. Faithfulness is commitment. Faithfulness is commitment to duty. Commitment to duty. Faithfulness is also loyalty. Loyalty. Commitment to duty and loyalty. And then it is also firm adherence to allegiance. Firm adherence to allegiance. So when you make your allegiance to something, someone, you firmly adhere to your allegiance. You do not change. You are not back and forth. And when we studied faith, we also studied doubt is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in way you think. Thinking and uh, um, doubting is going back and forth. Well, then f- having faith is remaining fixed. But Also being faithful is remaining fixed in the sense it is firm adherence to allegiance. Whatever you have allegiance to or whoever you have allegiance to, you firmly adhere to your allegiance. 
And that is also called loyalty. So it is a sad thing that in today, today's society, faithfulness is not really taught by parents to their children. And a lot of people are very unreliable, undependable, unstable, untrustworthy. A lot of people do not stick firmly to their allegiance to anything. They go with whatever feels good at the moment and whatever is convenient at the moment. Well, that is a very poor quality of character. Faithfulness is a strength of character that makes you solid, firm, stable, reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. It is your commitment to whatever you've committed to. To your duty. It is your loyalty. It is your firm adherence to your allegiance. So being faithful is being a person who is firm and a person who has a foundation. That's why they're firm. That's why they're solid. A solid person is a person who in themselves has a foundation. They have a foundation of truth. You know, there are even some sinners or unbelievers who actually have a strong character of faithfulness and they are just loyal and faithful even without being born again because they have that in their character. They're not born again, but there are still people who are faithful and loyal. But especially being a born again Christian having God living inside of you and his word given to you, you should be very faithful because you should be developing your life on the foundation of God's word. You have a foundation in you that is God himself. He is your strength and your firm foundation that you stand on. We talked about that some time ago. He is the rock that we stand on. So we have a firm foundation In our lives, it is God. He is our firm foundation. And so when you have a firm foundation, you become a firm, solid person. And so being a faithful person is being a person who is firm, who has a solid foundation, a person whom you can have confidence in at all times. A person you can have confidence in at all times. You are never having to wonder. I wonder if they're going to show up. I wonder if they're going to do what I asked. I wonder if they're going to do what we need. You can depend on them. You can be confident in them at all times. A faithful person is a person who is not Shaky, not shaky, and not changing all the time. You know, some people change with every new tide, every new idea that comes, every new diet, every new fad, every new idea about the way things should be. You know, they are constantly changing. Well, you can't rely on them or trust them when they are always changing. So a faithful person is one who is not shaky and not changing all the time. Now we are supposed to be changing into the image of Jesus Christ. And in that way, we are changing day by day being transformed into his image. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about an unreliable changing person who's always first going one way and then going another way. First following one fad and then following another fad. First believing one way and then believing another way. And then this person is a person who is steadfast and steady, like a foundation that does not move. This is a person who is not shaky or changing, but is always steadfast and steady like a foundation that does not move. This person, a a faithful person, 
will not give way or cave in under pressure. A faithful person will not give way or cave in under pressure. A faithful person is strong and steady and you can always count on them. Him or her. You can always count on them. In Proverbs 25, verse 19, it says, Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful or the unfaithful person in times of trouble. Now think about that. A bad tooth. A bad tooth is when you bite down on it, it hurts and you cannot then put any pressure on it. It gives way. That's a bad tooth. Also, the same is with a lame foot. A lame foot is when you try to lean on it, it it falls under the pressure. A lame foot is when you try to lean on it, it caves in. It falls under the pressure. So like a bad tooth, when you try to b- bite down on something and your tooth it, um, is bad, you it gives you pain and you cannot put any pressure on it. it. It gives way. Or like a lame foot, when you lean on it and it collapses under you, it caves in under you. That is how it is when you rely on an unfaithful person. When you rely on an unfaithful person in times of trouble. So an unfaithful person is like a lame foot or like a bad tooth. They don't do any benefit hanging around because when you try to lean on them, they're not there. They cave in. They're not there for you. So that's Proverbs twenty five, nineteen, Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is... Reliance on the unfaithful person in times of trouble. You can't rely on an unfaithful person in a time of trouble. In Psalm 15, verse 4, it's the last part of the verse talking about the righteous man is one who keeps his oath, or you could say his word, even when it hurts. And I will add on to that or when it is inconvenient. Now, let me say it again. Psalm 15, 4, talking about a righteous man, describing a righteous man. He is one who keeps his oath or keeps his word, even when it hurts or when it is inconvenient. So that means... That when you've said you're going to do something, you do it. Even if when it comes around to time to doing it, it's an inconvenience to you. It happens to be at the wrong time. It happens to maybe cost you a little too much. If you said you'd do it, you do it no matter how much it costs, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much it's inconvenient, no matter how much you have to go out of your way, even if you have to drive another so many miles to get the job done. If you said you would do it, you do it no matter the cost, no matter the inconvenience, no matter what else you have going on. And do you know that there are Many, many Christians who are very unfaithful in they are unreliable. They do not do what they say they'll do. Do you know how many churches have taken a sign up list for volunteers to help do something on a particular day? Let's say we're going to do this next Saturday, they say, and they get a list of People who sign up to say, yeah, I'll be there. I'll go help clean this up. We're going to we're going to do a cleanup day on Saturday and people sign up. And then only a fraction of those people actually show up to do the job. Only maybe a quarter of the people 
or a third of the people actually show up. Why? Because on Saturday, everybody else decided they had something else to do. Everybody else decided, you know, it's such a beautiful day. I'd rather go. I'd rather go boating. I'd rather go swimming. I'd rather go hiking. Oh, uh, you know what? I forgot. I got to do some shopping today. I'm sorry. I can't come to the church and help to do what I said I would do. Those are unfaithful people. Bottom line, they are liars. They are liars. When you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you make yourself a liar. You're a liar and you are unfaithful. You know, it's sad that in the churches today, people, when the church leadership or department leadership, maybe it's children's program, maybe it's the youth program, maybe it's the maintenance department. They're asking for volunteers, say we need help to do this on Saturday and they get 20 people signed up, raised their hand, say, yeah, I'll come and help. And then when Saturday comes, five people show up. And the others, they all had something else to do that day. They decided they would rather go do something fun, play around on the beautiful day, or they had shopping to do, or they had some other chore to do. But it just, they decided, you know, it just really isn't convenient for me to come to the church and help out today. I'm sorry I can't come. I know I said I would, but I I can't. They are liars. They are unfaithful. They are unreliable. They are undependable. They are like the lame foot that you try to rely on them when you need help and they don't show up. I want to challenge you today. If you have been that person and it's a lot of Christians, I mean, like I said, people volunteering for church um, activities, volunteering to do things, and probably less than half of the people actually show up to do the job, then that means there's probably half of the people in the church who don't do what they sell the, say they'll do. They don't show up when they say, yes, I'll do that. I'll be there. And that's an, an another thing is you need to be very careful. Never to say you're going to do something unless you are 100% committed to do it at all cost, no matter the inconvenience or the cost that there are a lot of people who are just trying to make people happy. So they say, yes, they'll do it when they're asked. But then later when it comes time to doing it, they can't do it. They don't want to do it. It's inconvenient. It's a problem. They have a conflict in their schedule. And they were too quick and too hasty to say yes. That's another problem. Don't be quick or hasty to say yes, you're going to do something unless you're ready to back it 100%. You are 100% committed to it. And if you're not 100% committed to it, don't say you're going to do it. Don't say you'll be there. Don't be hasty in your words. Like I said, there's a lot of people. They just want to make people happy. They just want to appease somebody. They want to look good if it's a public um uh, request, how many of you can come? And so you raise your hand. You want to look good in front of everybody else. But then when it comes time to coming, you really don't want to, you can't, you have a conflict. There are all kinds of reasons why people say they'll do something and then they don't do it. You need to be uh, careful. You're not that person. Don't say you're going to do it unless you are ready to be 100% committed to it. No backing down, no excuse, no way out. You're going to be there. You're going to do what you said you would do. And that is the kind of person God is looking for because God is faithful. God is faithful. 
You know, I, I always like to give praise to God for his faithfulness. He has been so faithful to me. He's been faithful to you. He doesn't change like shifting shadows. He is not here one day and gone tomorrow. He is someone you can depend on. So being a faithful person is being like God. You are demonstrating a, a very strong, powerful characteristic of God. God is faithful. You can always depend on him. You can always rely on him. He's always going to be there when he said he'll be there. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, when you say you're going to do something, you're going to be somewhere, you're going to give something, then do it. Be there. Give it. No excuses. No excuses. You are 100% committed to what you say. And if you're not ready to be 100% committed to do it, don't say it. Don't say you'll do it. Don't say you'll be there. Be very careful to guard your words and be very slow to say you're going to do something and only when you are ready to back it up. Well, that's our study for today. We'll pick it up here tomorrow. And also, don't forget our online discount Christian bookstore on our website at victoriousfaith.co. Go to the website, click on the tab, Victorious Faith Bookstore. We have over 2,000 titles of books, Bibles, and devotionals. And as you buy and shop through our bookstore, you are also supporting this ministry. Glory to God. Now, join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.